It is time for map number two. Time for Anubis. And oh boy, we're kicking things off straight away. Sam Dayong already met with a lot of action. First kill along the way up on Jerry. Monty off to a good start, but on the flip side, there is still a lot of damage dealt. Oh, bro, doing even more damage with Krasnell there as he converts two frames, but so does X5. Leaving us in a two versus two here as SDY and Demka. Look at how damn low they are. 11 HP between the two players, but still SDY charging forward, clearing down the lane towards that bomb site. He is able to hear those digits punched on in. Demka now coming in from B lane as X5 sits in comfortably towards dark. They need to strike as a unit here. But they have no information on the positioning of the remaining two T's. I mean, I think both of them are down in dark at the moment. It's going to be a nightmare ordeal for them to dispatch of them as soon as this first play around the corner. They are going to go down. That's Demka to fall. SDY a 1v2, an impossible task. He has no kit. And X5 is on for the ace right now. And it's going to be a pistol round ace for X5. His parry vision will be winning the pistol. The early damage was actually really good on uh, for Monty. Never feels kills going their way, but at the end of the day, the low HP players being the last to alive really was not helping them out. Paravision, the ace, win this pistol. Apologies, by the way, for the sirens in the back. <laughs> if those can be heard. It's been a long day. Uh, <laughs> perhaps, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, first pistol round. And uh, let's see how Monty will respond. It's going to be with a force buy. So that's uh, going to be a, a very exciting one. Yeah, the force buy busted on out here. It's a classic for the side of Monty. As X5 starts waltzing his way down towards B. I can see one defender through the wall on my X-ray. I don't know how stacked this bombsite is, though. That's Demka. Oh, trying to remember my map here. Yeah, that, that's towards A. Full full back behind the smoke of the play off of his teammate here. Boosts up the scout in Warro. Unfortunately, Jordan will be finding an opening. Why a good trade on the five step. Straight on back. Demka right to kill the kill feed. It's a two versus three right now for Crestal and Bro. Bro searching in towards middle, clears his corners on out, and I don't believe there will be a mid flank, but Crasdell instead coming up from CT. Smoke off towards the heavens, lobs an aid on over. Decent bit of tickle damage, but it's going to be Bro to find another frag. Exe Power straight on back, leaving Bro in a one versus two. Exe Power appears on out, heaven again contested. Long time a ticking away, a dink landed, but no kill converted. This looks like a bridge too far for Bro. No kit, no time, no real weaponry to help. And so he fades away to save his Kevlar, save that MV9. And that will be Monty letting another one slip to their opposition in parry vision. Bro might even be hunted down. Actually, does survive that. That's massive. And alongside, of course, you take uh, even more so weapons away uh, for Paravision. So it's going to be quite a heavy reinvestment here from them. And so it will be for Monty. It's still not in a very ideal spot. But they're going to be going for it anyways. Yeah, Monty... As we said, love a good force spike. Getting four kills in the previous round has encouraged them to try and break the economy of Paravision yet again. And given how short these hulls are in comparison to what they used to be, may as well try and get an early advantage as that need does exactly that. Uh, the util flies on over, but it will be an opener there for the likes of Demka. Demka continues to spray. It's great spam damage from the Famas. As now they pile onto this bomb site. Waro, bro, another kill apiece. They spot XC Power above the smoke. He's good for a single, but it's swiftly traded. Belchinok, a one versus four. He can takes the first that they push down on his position. Belchinok a second, but it will be Krasnell with his flames to dispatch of the Russian. And now it's Monty on the board. This time the economy broken on the side of Parry Vision, 
and I have a feeling we're about to witness an early battle of the four spies. <laughs> this is just classic right now with MR12. There is just little wiggle room. And, of course, um, the money is also just not great for Paravision, so it would have to be a double eco anyways. Um, so understandable that another force will come out, but I do think that with CS2, uh, probably more likely to see uh, forces uh, up on the table. And saving was predicted to become more common, but I'll be honest, we've not seen all that much saving so far. In fairness, it has been Monty who's been watching in Asian CS before that. They love their aggressive playstyle. Speaking of aggression, Cast now pushed upon Raijin. Only good for the single, though, is my god. Speaking of aggression, the round is over. That was incredibly fast, but I do believe we're going to come back to our faces for a couple of seconds here. Whilst we do try and fix that minimap and kill feed for you. And we are coming back to us. There we go. Hello. You get to see... <laughs> the uh, the vet's office again. I'm sure yeah. you missed it. <laughs> Same here. This is background looking a little bit tidier. As is the hair. Very nice over on that neck of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> You're worth it, darling. You're worth uh, it. No. Um, I mean, yeah. Um, just a small tech issue. But there we go. Um, oh. Should all be... Um, well, no not quite the mini map yet. It's uh, fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll get it maybe in exactly. uh, 10 rounds or so. Speaking of round count, this is a decisive one for Monty, and that is a decisive spray from SBY. Sumner Young ensures the opposition live up to his mantra. Belchanov does get away with that A1S, though. And that could complicate matters unless Monty are careful. Thrown straight in with another kill, though. A1S is dropped, and oh, okay, Rose is doing everything as Demka jumps on through and takes back control of middle. Nicely done from Monty. Mitigating the damage. Three to two with that. And uh, Paravision, of course, are definitely um, having some more money this time around on the table. But, it, it, yeah, similar like how we saw things happen on Mirage, it's, it's still a very back and forth affair. Yeah, I've been enjoying what we're seeing so far. I mean, Monty just about edging their way forward, though, off the back of the Force 5 victory. It is nice to see. It is classic Monty. And Monty are one of the two teams, if we go all the way back to when Anubis was released, I would say defined the meta, at least for Tier 2. It was Monty, it was Aurora, who I had my eyes firmly planted on. And Aurora have been left in the dust a little bit now, but Monty continued to deliver, as I said. 20 yeah. Anubis has played in the past three months, a very clean 70% win rate. On the flip side, we have had one Anubis played by Paravision in officials. It was in a closed qualifier, I believe it was, and they were unable to win it there. So at least they've had some practice, but nowhere near as much as Monty. Uh, at least they have had their practice on CS2 rather than on CSGO like our Ukrainian side here. But uh, I think the fact that they are the ninth best team in the world right now should probably balance things out on that side of the equation. On paper, yeah. Um, Monty definitely have uh, the upper hand in this one on paper. But like we saw in Mirage, nothing comes easy. It, it was sort of just by an inch. They were many able to <laughs> finally close it out. But it definitely was a very uphill battle. It didn't come easy at all. And... Um, yeah, maybe we're not quite used to seeing this side of Monty, uh, but it is actually very interesting that Paravision is uh, quite a worthy opponent. Yeah, again, I really like this Paravision squad. I, I mean, at a glance, Jerry, uh, just still one of my favorite IGLs, I'll beat that point to death. Uh, <laughs> I, I, he's got, this, you know, the sort of ragtag CAS bunch. Now, I think X5 and Raijin on the end of their stint of K23 really underutilized putting up some pretty poor ratings. I mean, Raijin mm. a 0.82 and X5 a 0.86. When they were sort of stars yeah. coming onto that lineup originally, they were really good, really fun to watch. And I'm hoping that Jerry, like he has done with many, many young stars before him, is able to reactivate them, relight that spark, and get them into uh, you know a very well-performing team, just like we used to see. Monty on the flip side, though, just need to utilize Bro as they have been doing recently. He's been great in this map so far. He was pretty damn good over in Pro League. As we're back into the game, Veronique, and it's Monty on the CT side, the harder of two sides on this map, to have an opening advantage. 
Yeah, you say that, but I've actually been seeing quite a big bunch of teams perform really well in Siege of Sun and Anubis now. Um, I, I'm not sure if it's the C CS2 sort of flow that comes <laughs> about, um, but uh, yeah, who knows? Paravision, though, they at least can afford rifles for this one. Still definitely using already quite a chunk of their util. XC Power is then the one who still has the most left, but the flashbang does wonders. Look at that. At least some die young dust right. That's a very important kill to get, but XC Power just continues. And he might not even be done with it yet. Now the problem is he does have the bomb. So he needs to be careful for potential to rotation. So he does sneak on through. The Krasnall might be here to intercept. The bomb makes it way to the side, or at least gets one as well. But it's close. Two versus three. Okay, that was not what Belchanov intended to do. He's just cut off his own teammate's rotation here. These nade bouncers are pretty wacky as that one was too, bro. Still able to continue the good fight though, but not for long. He goes down. Waro into the 1v1 up against X5 now. The man has the name of a robot. Does he have the aim of one? Not quite. Waro will shut him down behind the smoke. And that will now be a fourth on the board for Monty if Waro can find the bomb. Thankfully, he has it a few skip. <laughs> okay, there we go. As that defuse comes on here, may have doubled the round count of Perry Vision now. And it's, as you said, it's definitely becoming a little bit less T side in a lot of circumstances, especially yeah. with the release of CS2. But at its core, it's still the most one sided T sided True. map in the pool. And yeah. Monty are doing very well to find four here. Once again, we see uh, people continuing to buy up in orgs, um, which is, uh, like, we were already talking about a very interesting change, perhaps, in the meta. Um, maybe not every team is favouring it as much, um, but especially when you, you know, you don't really have to pull out the big guns like an orb just yet. Um, something like an orb can do. Ooh, Waro here. That's, uh, that's a very nice one to pick up. Say a spicy start to the round there for the likes of Monty. As Waro also given information about presence towards canals. The gun shots rattling off, not quite enough to keep him sticking around. Instead, he just keeps spamming that mid smoke as Demka needs to start spamming away towards Column. That's a really good Molotov. That denies so much presence towards the A bomb site. And oh, what do you know? He might even deny Raijin his life. It's a five on two. This has got Monty's name written all over it. Parry Vision really needed to win that opening map of Mirage, I feel, in order to stand a chance against Monty here. I mean, yeah. experience, cohesion. I could go on and on. This has got Monty in prime position to steal away a 2-0 in the opening day of EU Challenger. And Waro wants exactly that. And the gap is just getting bigger and bigger. The money still remaining uh, a little flat, a little lackluster for Paravision. Somewhat of a half buy can be bought into. Pistol, some util. That's pretty much about it. And Monty, therefore, their money is just going to be slowly going through the roof. Boro is almost on to 10k. And uh, near to having the half at least secured. Six on the line here. Bro will be peeking into water. No one there actively just yet. Oh, look at this though. The nade up in middle. A lot of pressure being put onto that middle position. Let's see why I don't... Oh my lord, that timing with the smoke fading is brilliant. Jerry will find a trade eventually though. But it's at least a numbers advantage now. It's a numbers advantage, but they have just given Jerry an AK. And he does have a couple of tech nines to assist him. As all three CTs swing straight into a Molotov there. Now they continue firing down towards middle and it is the right idea. They are still being pressured from this point. How Bro gets dinked there is completely beyond me. But he does manage to find X5. No he doesn't, excuse me. does manage to find a player covered by the kill feed. As now it's X5 and Belchanok in a 2 versus 4. The first removed and Waro. That is an excellent clean up. 6 on the board. And Parry Vision really struggling to get out of the starting gate here. This next round is going to be a very important one for Paravision. And 
maybe even Soda wants to come after if they do win it because they need to find some conversions right now. We'll be calling a technical timeout. I think this is the perfect moment for one to really get yourself back into the game. Yeah, this is an important breathing room for the likes of Perry Vision. I'm sure this map hasn't quite gone how they envisioned. But my wordplay aside, Monty's gameplay has been fantastic. Three times the round count of their opposition, and bear in mind there's only four rounds left in this half now. If Monty were able to find even a single round more, that is incredibly detrimental to Perry Vision's CT side. I feel like newer rosters often are better on the T side because they're unpredictable and it should be even more so with Anubis being the mapper on right now, but Monty, don't give a damn. They've been playing off each other incredibly well and the opening kill falling in favour of Bro complicates matters only further. Great swing back from Jerry in the wide swing again onto Krasnell. Means for the first time in a long time, Perry Vision have a man advantage. They've well, not been able to find a single round back after Monty won their four spike. Could this be the one? Oh, but that push is so nice, though. The CTs are split up, though. That is one thing that Monty needs to be careful for. But Boro just stands tall. That is an extremely tough fight. Now, Exi Power by himself does have the bomb on his back and is actually going to be going the way. Of Wara 2k. One on 12 kills and only two deaths. Checks the close angle. Oh! oh and Wara no. just has the advantage. Not quite his angle checked. And Wara just adds another one to the list. That's such an annoying angle to clear. It's Wara now has a 6.5 KD coming into the 10th round of play. We are just a few away now from closing out this half. Three rounds more to play for, and Perry Vision realistically need to be picking up every single one of them, but that's not something Monty wants to allow them. And Perry Vision don't allow themselves much of a buy either. They force up on into it. There is an AK make it a double. In fact, it is a better buy than I initially anticipated, but it's still XC power on no off at a tech nine. And a severe lapse of utility across the board here. Monty just need to cling on. But Jerry touches up onto another frag. Can they continue in this at the back of a little bit of momentum? And he appears to be on the cards as well. Monty initially had the right read, but have already started rotations over to B. This is not the right goal going off of Perry Vision's current position. Bit of a warning shot fired. Paravision line up a smoke for A. And at the same time, I do love this. Monty, they know that there's some sound being made over towards A and therefore push into B. That's information gained. And now Monty can start a reposition. We already see Waro making its way over towards the side to help them queue out. And still Paravision yet to make a move. Finally, some Muta will start to fly on out, but they're still hesitant to go. There's fire. There was an initial smoke, but the flash is perfect. Now, Waro SDY are left to deal with this job. The first kill is a fact. And is there more to be found? Is a very low player, a Belchonok. But it's a 4v2. Oh, oh. no. Belchonok just killed himself with an A. Oh, this makes the round so doable here for Monty. Bro spots another spams on down, but Jerry... Has already dispatched of his teammate, and it will be XC Power swinging wide with a Tech 9, picking up another frag. That got way too close after Belchonok suicides, but Perry Mijin are still able to put three up on the board, and with that, I mean, Monty still comfortably in the lead. Have limited Perry Vision to a maximum of five T rounds. <laughs> that was definitely messier than it needed to be. Uh, Perry, Vision, Perry Vision at least able to keep up that momentum off of three players surviving and put a fourth on the board. Well, let's hope for their sakes that they can. As Jerry peers into the middle on his creep early on. Demker in the meantime takes presence towards a game. Demker pushes forward. Not too sure if he had 
been heard. Well, the answer is no. He gets away with murder. He gets to. And oh my lord, Paravision. Once again, this could be a round and one in isolation and it all falls flat again. Definitely not impossible to come back, but this is far from an ideal start. AC Power at least able to trade one back into Paravision's name. But that was a just an awesome opener from Demka. Now, the amount of times in CS2, I've tried to do the same thing as him, but the other team have thrown a nade and blown up the smoke. He's incredibly annoying. I feel like a nade rather than a flash there was the answer to their woes. But their woes now on the continuous. x has been taken down. It's a two on four. Lovely adjustment from Jerry. Jerry doing it all as the IGL. Hold on a minute. It's a two versus two off the back of this. And yes, it's a double rear blank from Monty. And I've lied to you, it is just Jerry now to make this work. But it's a winnable situation if he just checks behind it. But some Dai Young takes the timing, takes the round. Demka sticks the defuse, and that will be eight on the board to Monty. This is really impressive stuff. And now we have landed ourselves in the last round of the half. It can be invested for Perivision into this round. But it's sort of a must for them to win. We were talking about, you know, this is one of the more T-sided maps. And it's not quite up on the table for Paravision just yet. So at least get yourself a full. Then maybe with finding yourself a pistol after halftime switch. Maybe then it can still be done. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to rule Paravision out of this match in the slightest. But I do want to say it's going to be difficult. Belchinol bounces another note back towards himself. Bro, though, bounces out round with Demka. Catch a Belchinol and Jerry in an awesome crossfire. SDY, another one to Rage, and another through the smoke. And oh my god, the half is oh, over wow. as quick as you like. 9 to 3 for the likes of Monty. And on that note, we're going to be heading into a short break before we come back and see if Paravision can recover things.
got it. Don't. Welcome back again to the second half of our second matchup here between Monty and Parry Vision. Jerry attempts to start proceedings by clearing up in towards the middle. Much bang over the top, allowing him to extend for a second time with the bullets raining down towards his position. Keep him at bay. Jerry, I would not have turned your back there if I were you. SDY capitalizes onto a complete freebie and Monty again open up the round and start heading towards the weaker defended of the two bomb sites. Raijin having an appalling game so far gets absolutely shattered by Krasnell. And with that, it's a five versus three ensuing. Bro is planting the bomb and Monty already looking like a tenth might be theirs. What can you do in a position like Raijin's just so low on the side? Too many angles to look at, and now three players need to come into clutch. At least MQ has been found, but so many players are already pretty well positioned, and the time continues to tick. They make something actually off of this. Some Dayong, there we go, finally gets Bell Chornok. And now he's sorted by himself. Then again, there's so much stalling already happening that it doesn't even matter. Uh... There's no kit, unfortunately. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think Exit Power knew his time was up there. I don't know how that got down to a one versus one, by the way. Shout out to Exit Power for pulling off some nutty kills there. But Monty are able to pick up the pistol, put themselves onto 10 rounds. And they need only three more to win out their own map pick here. The second map of this series. And... Sweet things, two to zero. Parry Vision, it's a continual uphill battle. I think it's for the best if they don't go for the force fight here. There's Monty. I mean, this means they're effectively going to be gifted 11 rounds for free. Yeah, they only need as many rounds as Paravision have collectively been able to achieve so far this map. It really does not look good for the newer side. Well, they say made things competitive on their home turf of Mirage, but as I said, if they wanted any real chance of taking this series, that Mirage conversion needed to come through. But Bro does still go down to the Usps. Those pesky pistols. Demka just needs to be careful here. And they run at him with knives out. And he's just, yeah, he's lopping off heads. Just farming. Oh, I should pretty much expect. At least there is a weapon. Writing could <laughs> potentially make it a bit more costly. <laughs> Get spotted. Throws in a smoke. At least tries to buy uh, himself some time. And now we have X5 up in the middle who could make things icy for those exiting through border. But no, he gets dealt with. And now they should know somewhat of Raijin's position. But he still gets away with a kill. How much more can he get? Oh, he gets straight killed <laughs> out of bullets. And Mara is then the one to clean it right up. 11 up on the table. Only two more to find. Yeah, Monty looking pretty saucy right now was Paravision. Yeah, not so much. Not that they would have been able to net a comeback in CSGO regardless. Again, they let so many rounds slip on their T side. So many winnable ones at that. Just constantly outmaneuvered, overpowered, out-aimed. And yeah, there are still a couple of nuances that everybody's trying to get used to. And apparently the org is busted. According to our previous map from Mirage, it's not a weapon I've tried out all that much myself just yet. As Bro gets a nade landing perfectly on him. Not going to do too much to his pace though. Instead, he runs straight on out into the open arms of Jerry. Raijin in a second. A three versus five here for Monty right now. And this is certainly going to put a little bit of a dampener onto their near flawless ambitions. Jerry, very, very Ooh. blind. SDY, a great kill. Only good for the single conversion though. It's still going to be a nightmare trying to win out this round for Monty. So many smokes, at least it will buy them some time. Nate goes in the wrong one, but Raijin still spots him. So Wara 2k then left by himself, and even though, yes, he does get two. Oh, there we go. <laughs> they were <laughs> looking for the bomb. But uh, the fourth round is coming into fruition, and uh, well... Can this be enough? I will have to, uh, well, have to find out if that's going to be enough. It, it's still a very uphill battle, but even
even with how the previous map looks, it looks very much one-sided at a point that I was like, okay, Monty looked super flat, and then they still won it out in the end. So, you know, if you're Paravision, I would say, never give up. Yeah, never give up. There's no need to give up, because it's not like you're going to get this done any faster. This is also great practice for a newer team up against the ninth best in the world. And Jerry, that's probably not good practice immediately running through the B main smoke, getting absolutely flattened by Bro on a force by XE Power, thankfully able to trade that one on back. Now another boost, a counter boost coming through for Monty. Will he be able to catch the connector player? Perhaps the back pillar? No, instead, Waller tanked on down with a leg shot. The pistol spam comes in. It will result in XE Power taking a tick of damage of his own in return, but the USP's not quite powerful enough to deal a killing blow. And with that, Monty's round not looking to be a, a particularly easy one, given some of these health bars. Monty take it so slow that Poravision has repositioned. We have two players over towards middle. And just X5 up on B. There's a back turned as well. If the timing does not quite work out, they're going to be trying to pop right on through. The smoke is in his face. Now what can he do? He's sort of on the back side just hoping for someone to cross. Not quite his way just yet. There we go. Trying to make something out of this right now. Trying to swing left and right, but the smoke is actually helping X5. Trying to isolate the duels. And they win yet again another round on the back of the previous one. So this is now starting to look better and better. But I would have to say, Monty, some small slip-ups happening there. Yeah, Monty. Need to start curbing these minor egregiences. Otherwise, Barry Vision will be able to get their feet straight back through the door. One foot is fine, but when it's both through the door, that's when you're going to start worrying. And they've been pushing smokes as well. It's Cherry. Pushing the limits of the shotgun. He's brought out the auto shotty and peaks mid with it. Yeah. That is a wealth of damage done to Waro at that range. A lot of people have been saying shotguns have been given a buff in CS2 as well. I've been seeing a lot of pro players running around with them recently. They give a very high kill reward as well. If you're able to find two kills, it effectively pays itself back off. That is, of course, a big ask. That's two kills with a medium range weapon at best. Crashed out. Now peering his way in towards middle. Does have a little bit of support coming up to join him. Raijin does spot the first man. As there is currently nobody here to help out Raijin. Instead, it's Belchanok to spray down too. Oh, and... no. Wait, no. Demka's just killed Waro. That's oh. a problem. And Jerry comes in from behind as well. It's a 1v3 for Bro. Yeah, that is not what you want to be seeing. Monty perhaps could have still gotten a chance, especially with X5 being low. But yeah, team kill certainly is not helping out, and Jerry just spams the smoke. Upgrades to a rifle instead. And uh, yeah, Paravision slowly make their way up on the board. Of course, there is still a large chunk of rounds they need to make up for. Five to even out the scoreline. So is it a tough, uh, or is it an easy task? Absolutely not. Um, but the momentum slowly starts to get there. Yeah, so I'm curious to see if my point from earlier actually reigns true. I said that CS2 is going to make matches a lot more T-sided because of your peaker's advantage, because of the T-sided weaponry being that much more effective, but... I mean, so far we've not really seen that come into fruition yet. Yeah, and Inferno this morning is a bad game from the likes of Mongols, but we're definitely going to need a larger sample size as aggressive CT players apparently just as good. Leaving poor old Krasnell and Demka in a two versus five. Jerry, my God! The IGL up to an even kilter with his own personal scoreline now, leading from the front. As Demka doesn't really know what hit him, nor does he know quite what hit his teammates, other than a very aggressive play from the opposition IGL. 
There is now only four rounds between the likes of Parry Vision and the likes of Monty equalizing, as this one is already said and done, unless well, Demko can pull off a 1v5 clutch, and I don't see that happening given the current positions of Parry Vision. I mean, Vilas, is this actually a possibility? Could Map 3 actually be waiting in the wings here? It's, it's especially scary, Park Vision here. Just when you get clean. I mean, okay, maybe not. <laughs> Don't you? Does one Jerry? But still, there's a large chunk of players still alive and kicking, and surely there we go. They will have to account for DemQ. But the majority of the players are alive. The money's slowly getting into a better spot as well. And the score line creeping in closer. And this is the thing. If the economy is not quite up on the table, Monty might choke. They might struggle to close it out. Yeah, this is getting increasingly worrying for the T-side of Monty. They've not really been able to get anything done, regardless of defaulting or attempted sign executes for the longest of time here in Algeri. You naughty man, lining up with a shotgun, doing a tickler nade damage. This is Jerry's world, we're just living in it. There we go. Oh, Jerry finds two. Krasnow thankfully able to trade things back, but the Galil swiftly removed by the AUGs. And the round is done in, what, 20 seconds? Monty really, really struggling to get off of that 11th round. I mean, we could well be staring down the barrel of an overtime here at Parry Vision. Don't just take it in regulation. They look so strong and well rehearsed on their CT side that Monty just don't quite know what to do with themselves. But at least we have another gun round here. Another chance for Monty to prove themselves. This is going to be a very impactful round, though. If Paravision actually deny the 12th here, it's very much possible to, well, maybe even run away with the map after all. Belchorno gets eager, wants to go for a push, and there's no one there actively. There's a nice flash behind him. Of course, will sort of reveal that a push could be happening. Bro is the one to deal with it. On the flip side, there is a very large chunk of damage over towards middle from a nade thrown by Jerry. And XC Power gets the first kill on Sonda Young as well. Yeah, Raijin on the back of the A bomb site under pressure here. Krasnow finding at least a kill, but Raijin is straight back in with further proceedings. Tuara does make it over to Column. But there's plenty of util to flush him out. I believe his position is well accounted for. It certainly is now as Raijin sends him to the Shadow Realm. And bro, uh, what can he do in a 1 versus 4? No bomb. Limited time. Nothing to trade off of. And now he's moonwalking into Jerry's position. Jerry is on fire. 18 and 17 right now. From what was a pretty poor showing in the first half across the board. Monty... I've been touting their Anubis as a thing to look up to. But now, I, I mean, they're just getting looked down upon by this new parry vision side. Out reading them, out maneuvering them. And Monty just not landing the frags required to make these rounds even close to being convincing. I'm not convinced by this buy either. Yes, it's a half buy, but it's a very expensive one at that. I can't believe we had a 9 to 3 half as well. And it, look at what the scoreline is. It's incredibly close. Oh, but maybe that's more like it. A very aggressive pace over towards middle. And the rotation is still yet to come on through. They might not even look to stop. Bro gets flashed in. And as soon as that fire phase, Raijin is in trouble all by himself. Very similar scenario. Does get support actually. But can they deal with it? Someday Young finds one, a bro to follow up. And this might be the round that they have been waiting for, trying to get to 12. I mean, it only took them how long, but it's better that it happens now than at an equalized scoreline. That is so unlucky. XC Power had that kill, it looked like, but now SDY continuing to cause further carnage. Swings on out, finds two more to his tally, three in total in the round, as Monty give themselves three opportunities to close. This is not match point. This is series point right now for Monty. If they win this one. It's two to zero. But Parry Vision do not want to let that happen. And I doubt that they will. They've been impeccable so far on the CT side. 
nearly six rounds in a row, if not that entirely. We've got an Orc on XE power, and again, four AUGs. I don't know what's so special about the gun. I'm going to have to try it <laughs> after we finish this series, but... My God, have they been absolutely brutalizing Monty with them. And it does come down to personal preference after all. Oh, and this is quite tough. Fire. Revealing positions, and Beltonic with that activated. Eyes up on water, Jerry. To support. But Monty take it slow. They don't really make a decision just yet as to where they want to head the bomb close to the spawn still. Every door still open. Yeah, anything could happen here. As bro, very, very Ooh, lucky that those flames do not spread to him. There is about half an inch each way. The Sum Tai Young takes up more than an inch of X5G. He takes up the entire cranium. Demka, another. Hold on a minute. Everything's starting to fall apart for Parry Mission here. The momentum quelled, but Jerry. Jerry continues the good fight. Pulls back another frag. Doesn't take all that much damage in the process. Exit power. Tries to lock down A. Aiming very low. As he's fought away by a flashbang, goes back for second servings, lands a great flick shot, but can he deal anything further? Pressured upon, and Krasnow strikes again. Krasnow, the Galil mastermind, it seems. Does switch over to an AWP as Raijin hiding in the corner, locks the head off of a poor old Krasnow, but he is left in a one versus one here. Defensive util flies on over, time is ticking, eight seconds remain, SDY and Rora need to start finding frags, and they need to start finding them quickly, three seconds remain, and it's going to be Waro very narrowly catching that final kill, and with that, Monty will be winning 13-9, to nine. it will be a 2-0 to zero for the ninth best team in the world, and as the debate goes on about whether they should even be here in the first place, is it unfair to the rest of the bracket?